thanks for taking me in the end so that I can construct my responses based on my previous panelist response. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so the definition of norm has totally changed in the past, uh, you know, 60 days. The norm that we looked at in the past pre-COVID uh, and now if, uh, you know, the government comes and opens up, things are very different. When I say very different at a macro level and a micro level, things are very different. So once the government comes and opens the travel industry, which is at ground zero right now, uh, the first, uh, the demand is not going to surge right away. It's going to be pretty low. So for the existing demand, how, did, how do you, what are a few things that you're supposed to do? The first thing is how innovative are you with your marketing and with your packages structure in the travel industry? Do you, would you want to uh, waive the cancellation fee and what are a few things that you would do around that? And even the incentives from the government for the airline industry, we've got to see how, you know, that's going to benefit the consumer as well. That's more at a macro level. And when you come at a micro level, uh, the customer persona uh, and, or the customer confidence is the, at the lowest that you see when they go out. So there's a lot of ambiguity about the cleanliness, the, you know, the, um, the sanitation that's maintained out over there. So to gain the consumer confidence across, there's going to be a lot of work that needs to be put in. So uh, the proper measures need to be taken out over there. And it's very pivotal for any business out over there. The sanitation, the cleanliness, uh, you know, making sure the hygiene is followed, everything. The earlier that was not a norm, but washing hand is a norm right now. So every five, 10 minutes, everybody started washing their hands. So, the, uh, so uh, overall, what we look at is a zero touch approach, what uh, Pavanjit has articulated. And uh, we wouldn't want many uh, you know, touch points where the, there is a chance of spreading of the virus. And more of validations related to the biometric uh, thing at every touch points. And more of understanding the customers and the partners in this industry. When I say customers and partners, see, uh, the, uh, uh, the reality on the ground is very different. So there are a few people who have been tested positive who could recover. They're coming back to work and they're, you know, uh, starting their work again. So how do you differentiate them? What is a norm for them? How do you put things across to make sure they come back to work and they still are secured and everybody's secured around? So how do you differentiate that from that? And when some product is being consumed from them, what are the few norms that you've got to follow if uh, a product is being dispatched from a you know, previously positive, COVID positive person? What are a few things that you're supposed to do? So there are certain processes that need to be you know, put it across the chain. And uh, in this industry, you would have a detailed you know, safety route where it would say where are the red zones, orange zones, to make sure that you maneuver through the, you know, where you avoid all the red zones out over there. And as uh, Vaijendi has put it across, privacy is very critical. Data privacy is very critical because there's a lot of information that we are going to seek, as Robin said, because the products that you're going to give to the consumer needs to be more personalized. You've got to figure out what products to you know, give it to the customer. So there's a lot of data that you've got to curate, understand the data and uh, give the related product. And uh, uh, the organizations which are understanding the impact and going to implement an agile model are going to survive. So you've got to know what is happening on the ground. Um, how are the partners behaving in this industry? How are the customers behaving in this industry? In a car, how many would want to travel? So earlier, if it is Innova, seven people would want to travel. Would that be going to be a norm in the future? Absolutely not. What would the norm be? What are a few things uh, that you've got to follow over there? And also what we have seen is, um, and some of them we actually implemented at Zippies as we speak. So uh, the other thing that we see picking up is uh, EV. Pick, uh, the EV was uh, picking up and not an accelerated rate, but post COVID we, uh, we are uh, hoping that the EV adoption is much faster than what we have seen in the past. One is because there's a lot of push for uh, reducing the carbon footprint out over there to make sure that you know, we don't see such scenarios in the future. So there's a lot of you know, uh, the proactive approach from all the industries across. And the other thing that we are seeing is in the shared economy, carpool is going to um, you know, uh, slow down a little bit right now because you know, the customers wouldn't want to travel with somebody whom you don't know about. So even when the passenger is getting into a car, they, we would want to know the history of the passenger using the Arugia, uh, you know, Arugia Setu app, where he has been, was he tested positive, how long he has been, if he has been quarantined, when did he get, get quarantined? The whole history of that particular passenger so that the, you know, the partner is uh, safe and secure. When I say partner, the driver is safe and secure. 
and it works the other way around as well. So in that way, uh, when there's so many, so much ambiguity around, the self drive is going to pick up because uh, you wouldn't have a you know driver where you have many questions around it. So the self drive, all the millennials actually have adopted to the self drive, but this particular um, the COVID would accelerate that process as well, where a lot of them would want to come and you know hire a cab and uh, drive around. And uh, what we are seeing is there are a lot of, you know, small uh, uh, travel agents who are suffering, you know, with the, uh, with the COVID lockdown. So what Zippies has done is that we have brought them, all of them onto the platform. And it's very pivotal to take care of these small industries as well. Small, you know, some small travel agents, you can't let them crash. If there is an opportunity, because the customer confidence comes from a local guy. And how do you put, you know, stitch everything together with your technology, with your, you know, understanding the customer persona relating to the right uh, product all those th all those things you have to put it into the common platform and do it so at the same time we launched something called covid sati which actually gave us a, a human intent on the ground more on the you know as you rightly put it across the mental wellness of a, a customer what are they thinking what are what are few things that they are going through and how should the product shape around so that has given quite a bit of insight to you know to relate those uh, grievances that the customers are going through and embed into the product. So before my end, uh, before I end my, uh, you know, answer to, uh, to your question, uh, Mahua, one thing I would like to emphasize is empathy is very critical for any product across. So be it, uh, you know, at the beginning or in the end, when I say beginning, be it on the supply side or on the demand side, empathy has to get reflected at every point. So how, it can be, you know, integrating the technology, uh, you know, uh, having the processes in place, audit mechanism, training, beat anything out over there. But the product needs to have that embedded into it. Thanks. Thanks for giving me the opportunity. <music>